Today I want to help you develop a strategy for picking out a good property. We're down in Sugarland at a 1988 home. It looks to be in overall good condition. In the words of the master inspector Chris Murphy, let's go check it out. The next part of the strategy is I recommend you walking around the exterior of the home before you go to look inside. Uh, personally, I always like to start at the gates, at the fence, because I go all the way around and that makes me have to come around and look at the exterior twice to get into the backyard. So let's take a look at the couple of things I found on the exterior of this home. First thing I noticed walking up are these termite bait stations. These are installed not to prevent or kill termites, but to tell you if there's termites in the soil around the property. Uh, these normally come with a warranty from the pest control company, so that's something that you want to ask the homeowners about. The next thing we notice is a lot of heavy foliage and trees at the front of the property. This could invite termites and other pests into your home. Uh, you want to trim these back off the wall at least 18 inches. It's not a huge concern for this property because they do have the bait stations in place. As I turn the corner, I notice a crack in the brick. A lot of people would associate this with foundation movement, but actually when you see a straight crack like that, it has to do with the thermal expansion of the brick and not a foundation movement. The main theme of my strategy is to look at everything from top to bottom. Uh, in the exterior of the home, we want to start with the roof, and the first thing you want to look at is the color of the roof. If you notice that the shingles are kind of shiny looking, um, that means that the roof is towards the end of its life. That comes from the granular loss of the shingles and the protective layers of the roof starting to wear out. In the case of this property, the roof is nice and dark. Uh, it's actually got some dirt from trees on it. it has nothing to do with the performance of the roof. Um, after you look at the color of the shingles, you're going to look at any penetrations. In this case, we have some vent stacks right behind me. Um, the flashing is, is obviously damaged, so that's going to need to be repaired by a roofer. And the damage is something that anyone can look up and see uh, on their pass-through on the exterior. The last thing we want to look at is are there any trees touching the shingles. In this case, we have some trees in the corner that are touching the roof, and you want to keep those trimmed back so that the branches don't damage the shingles. As I come around the corner, I've noticed that both HVACs are new. On the 1988 home, that tells me that the homeowners are taking care of the property and replace a major system on the home. Now that we're at the fence, we're going to go around the front for a second pass and get to the backyard. As we get to the back of the property, we notice these drill holes. These are actually termite preventative treatments that the homeowners have done. So then you want to ask the homeowners, was this a preventative treatment or were there termites on the property? We're at the back of the property. Everything looks really good back here. Uh, siding looks good. So we're going to continue our top to bottom theme and head up to the attic. Continuing our top to bottom strategy, we're going to head up into the attic. I recommend asking your realtor for permission. And if you go up into the attic, stay on the ladder. For this video, I'm going to be heading further in to investigate. I suggest using the top to bottom strategy even on your appliances. We're at the water heater up in the attic, so I start at the top. I look at the flue, and I notice that the flue pipe is touching the decking on the roof. You want a one inch clearance from all your combustibles for that warm flue pipe. As we travel down, we see some corrosion at the water fittings at the top of the water heater. This comes from dissimilar metals, and you need a dielectric union to keep the corrosion from further uh, from further damage. As we travel down, we also notice some uh, debris and rust in the pan. This does not mean that the water heater is inoperable. In fact, it's working fine. It just needs some minor maintenance. Okay, the next thing that we notice is some uh, problems with the duct work. First being that they've made some prior repairs with duct tape, which is actually not the correct tape to use for duct in your attic. Uh, the problems being that you're going to lose some air efficiency at the tape and in the heat humidity of this hot attic the tape is actually going to pull off and fall apart. Uh, the last thing is you want to uh, suspend your ductwork off of the insulation of the attic floor so that it doesn't condensate and create water spots in your ceiling. Okay, after spending a few more minutes in the attic and we're running hot water in the property, we hear that the water heater is starting to rumble. That means there's a lot of sediment buildup in the water heater and it needs to be flushed. As we leave the attic and we start our top to bottom on the interior of the home, you want to be worried about major problems with the inside of the house. Do you see water damage in the ceiling? Do you see 45 degree angles in the walls, uh, 45 degree angle cracks? That suggests a structural movement. If you see vertical cracks in the sheetrock, that's normally just a man-made problem and that's minor. Uh, looking through the upstairs of this home, everything looks really good. One small thing that I noticed was on these balusters, these are built more than four inches apart, which is your current building standard. Since this is a 1988 home, I'm not too concerned with this. You just want to make sure if you have small children like me that you don't stick the, they don't stick their heads through the balusters and get them stuck. Now we're downstairs on the property. One of the things I noticed in the half bath is that the toilet is loose and it's leaking a little bit at the back. Both minor fixes, but something you definitely want to take care of when you move into the property. This concludes our quick view of the property. With the strategy, I know you're probably not going to find every small thing, but it'll give you a good idea on the major components of the home. 
As always, I like to look top from bottom, starting with the exterior with the roof and doing a full top to bottom scan of the exterior walls and then going inside to the attic and then doing a top to bottom on the interior of the home. Again, you want to look past the, uh, the cosmetic small things in the house and really look for major components that need repair. If you have any home inspection questions, please give us a call and as always, like and share the videos.